Well, hey, welcome to the show before the show, where I check to make sure everything is working. It wasn't, but it is now. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, your local game guy, and today I'm joined by Will, co-host Will. Hello, sir. Uh, and to get to the quick and dirty of today's live stream, uh, we talked about it last week, we're getting into it this week, I've been thinking about it the whole week, Satoru the Infiltrator. Uh, two cost, Demir, two three, human ninja rogue, that draws. Um, I aptly named it the Quick Draw Commander because we should hopefully be drawing pretty quickly, but apparently not as quickly as Stella Lee. Yeah, so oh yeah, Stella Lee's done. Get hyped for that, and we're not doing that today. But yeah, Will, you want to talk about your thoughts on Stella? We were just talking about her off camera. I mentioned to Will like I, I would, I could see myself playing her, but when she was announced, I'm like, oh, she's you okay? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the power flickered for oh, a second. Oh, I can't so hear you. Like, Your audio cut off, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, no, yeah. It's my Check your mic. Doing a weird adjustment thing. Hold up, I'm gonna tell Discord to fuck off. <laughs> you guys can um, hear me though. Oh, you know what? That's odd. You're coming through on talk again. Uh, talking, talking, testing huh. one, two, three. You're coming through for them, but I can't hear you. I'll one figure second. that out. Oh, hey, double me. How about now? Nope, still can't hear you. Still can't hear me. What the fuck? That's okay. Let me figure this out. See, this is why we have the show before the show. That is... Turn off microphone? No. Keep talking, Will? Yep, talking, talking. Hello, that's hello, weird. Hello. The audience can definitely hear you, though, so that's good. Yeah. My cat that's... is losing its head, by the way. You probably can't hear him, but... Uh... uh streamer mode enabled. I'm gonna turn okay, that off. That's so freaking oh. weird. Uh, huh. Yeah, it's the oddest thing. Well, I don't think it's I don't think it's you. I'm gonna assume it's OBS or something. There's something going on here. But anyway, uh, guys, how are you all in the audience? Have you been excited for Satoru as much as I've been? I am anxious to see if I open a copy of him. We should be opening some packs in a second, but let me work through this technical niggle really quickly. All right, Will might be texting me. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's... All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. No. Okay, still not there. working. It was Discord doing, doing a dumb thing. thing. Okay. Well, I can hear you now. I can hear you through my laptop. But I'm not trying to play you through my laptop. Oh, weird. Can you talk now? Yep. Uh, talking, talking, no, talking. That's so weird. Hmm? I love these. These usually work really, really great, uh, but for some reason, it's not letting me hear you through my clear arcs. So we're going to turn that off. That's fucking what it is. No, I got a gut feeling that because my phone's Bluetooth was on, like it was trying to share a signal, and it didn't want to share a signal. Hey, Rich. All right, we're going to try that one last time, and then I'm going to switch to a headset. I just don't want to wear a headset. I wear headsets all day. I'm really good on the headset. Try talking now. Nope. <sighs> yeah, try one more time. Nope. Okay. Here. I'll use a headset. Actually, how about this audience? Can you hear Will? through my laptop, through my microphone. Because if there's an echo, I'll stop it, but try now. Uh, testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. All right, this is more, and it's one, more, one more time. Testing, 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 one, two, three. That's so weird. And now they can't hear you on Discord. The Discord audio over on. So weird. Okay. Yeah, try talking now. Yeah, that's the this is this is maybe problematic. Give me one second. Yeah. Discord, Will. So this is what I was talking about. I would wanna play some gameplay with you guys, but um OBS has really been acting up. Uh especially since I just updated it, so bear with me. I might have to like refresh OBS. Let's do it. Let's see what happens to the stream. Stay tuned for uh, more of this nonsense.
I promise we'll be back. We're gonna make us we're gonna make something happen in a second. You're currently active stream recording shut down. Are you sure you want? No, I'm pretty sure I don't want to. Actually, you know what's more important to me? Well, I just want to make sure we pipe your audio in. I don't know why it's being this way. You know, maybe if I just plug my headset in, it'll work. That'd be amazing. Hmm. No, I can hear you. Well, yeah, the audience can't hear you. It's weird. It's a one or the other. Only one. Only one of us is allowed to hear Will. Audience, would you rather or should I? Here. Hold. 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 I'm gonna kick OBS to the curb very, very soon. All right, we'll try now. Mm hmm I hear you, but the audience doesn't. Okay, so over here, deck building, Discord with audio, Discord will, uh, we're gonna switch this up. We'll go over here, and then we'll go back over here. Try again. Testing, testing. There One, you go. Two, they can hear you now. Try over All here. Right. God, All I right. can't wait to see the Satro cool. Infini Draw Engine deck building. Cameron, I can't wait to either. I've been waiting for this moment. Okay, I can hear you, Will. They can hear all you. Right. Good, good, we're good. We're all set. Nobody needs to worry about anything. Anyways, uh, remind me to cut much of the beginning out of this video after this. But hey, welcome, welcome back. Again, this is what the show before the show. I'm going to drink some of this rye. Enjoy whatever you have in front of you. Our company, water, another beverage. Will, cheers to you. To the Jeez. weekend. God, I had, had such a long ass week, dude. I was in Virginia with oh, some cool. of the, you're near me. Yeah, well, I was, but it was all work and I had zero downtime and much of my time was spent in travel or transit. And like the thing we bought to travel with like 70 pounds worth of sticks, like ancillary devices, um, that it broke so i had to drag this shit everywhere it wasn't it was intense i'm like well this shit's going back one uh and two i never want to see so many shitty uber expenses again like i literally i think that uber caught me up in waiting periods for at least an hour and 30 to two hours of my life like were taken away from me waiting for ubers to arrive that would just cancel it was the craziest thing and i have a good like user score i don't i'm so i don't know how that process works but like in virginia you'll order an uber and it's like 20 minutes away and i'll wait and then people will just cancel while in route it's like what is going on and it's like if i cancel i take a fee i'm like well what? i'm not gonna do that it was i was insane dude i lost my mind um, and I only used Uber because part of like the per diem when I was there, like the company gave me money, but like Uber cash. So I'm like, well, I, I'm going to have to use Uber, I guess. I usually use Lyft and I swear to God, and since I've been using Uber, they've been sending me so many fucking like refer a friend, get $8. I'm like, I'm not going to refer no one, not even my enemies. What I tell to use fucking Uber. I was, I was livid, dude, this, this whole week. <sighs> I spent at least... 250 bucks on ubers it was anyways how was your week i'm glad you survived uh my week was uh pretty good it was nice and chill up until today where uh, i got a, a whole bunch of extra calls and uh supposedly i was supposed to get to my first call at eight and get to my last call at five so i'm like oh i was supposedly gonna be getting two hours of overtime but that didn't happen because i work quickly also, my um, weekend isn't starting yet because I have work tomorrow. Oh, shoot. What time? Uh, 8 a.m. in D.C., meaning I have to leave home at 7. Okay, so, well, uh, I'll let the cat out of the bag. Technically, uh, technically, I have two shoots this weekend. One in the morning and one in Coney Island on Sunday at 11. So... It's not like I'm not working this weekend. It's not like I ever give myself a day off. Um, but uh, fortunately, these both of these projects are pretty short. Like one is uh, just capturing some revisions for a video that that's already in the can. The other is like four separate, four to five separate social projects, which 
I need to figure out the invoicing of because it's more than usual with them. Um, at any rate, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. The set has been the Wham Bam Thank You Ma'am David Bowie special of Magic Yeehaw, the Gathering. New crime. Yeah, I don't know why I liken it to David Bowie. I really love David Bowie. He's one of my favorite artists, and I gotta say, this is maybe one of my favorite sets, just from a mechanical standpoint. They put out so many good cards, and uh, I kind of want to crack some packs before we get into this one. Something to ease my mind. <laughs> Help me relax as I go into a weekend, question mark. Um, well, hopefully after your work and our collective jobs, we'll get some downtime, but... Do, do, okay, so... In case you guys don't watch every live stream, and that's okay. Uh, Will got the right side, I got the left side. That's just how we've been doing it. The right side was really good last time. You want to flip it around? I'm cool if you want to try flipping no, that no, around. No, because then I do that. <laughs> and then you open all the Satoru's. Actually, I just want to... If we could pull a Stella Lee, I would love to get a Stella Lee. But uh, that's... Oh, okay, yeah, you referred to this earlier, but Stella Lee is going nuts right now because pretty much every single time i've seen stella lee mm. be played or be mentioned stella lee has been like a tier zero commander um and the reason why is stella lee is a three mana commander kind of competing with timna at entering has a better stat line than timna draws at about the same rate as blue farm which is an insane because with the first effect of impulse drawing usually two times per rotation is what i've seen and the second effect, copying your cantrip and draw effects so that you're drawing even more cards, you can turn two cards into six cards. So, Stella Lee is just a absolute engine, in addition to being a really brutal blocker, in addition to having 20 possible one-card combos, 10 of them being CDH viable, potentially 12, but... 10 of them being CDH viable, and you either get infinite mana, infinite draw, or infinite damage. Oh... Um, it's not enough infinites, Will. Yeah. Uh, Stella Lee also has a three mana omniscience, because if you do Karizev's expertise, you can copy it infinitely, so you cast every spell from your hand that costs two or less for free, meaning that you just cast every cantrip in for free and you chain into cantrips. Dude, I love yes. the oh, fact... Stella Lee's broken. Stella Lee is so good... Some people have discussed maybe banning Stella Lee. Not the RC. Not the RC. It's just a bunch of random people who have talked about the game have talked about Stella Lee maybe being banned no. in EDH just because we've never had a commander with 21 card combos before. I love and it. And that is potentially problematic for EDH in general because if a fifth of your deck is I win the game, that's not fun Yo. that's overly consistent and that kind of goes against everything that EDH stands for but right, right. you can still build Stella Lee as just generic spell slinger so it's probably not gonna get banned I'm kind of cool with it genuinely like I oh, really yeah. don't mind like I, I like seeing really amped up dual colored commanders like Stella Lee because again like I, I was mentioning well off camera she was really really appealing I feel like I've, I'm on a Demir kick but when I when we really looked at this one when we were rating it, I'm like, man, I don't know. This feels pretty pretty tilted to me. I feel like this is just going to perform extremely well. So it's nice to know that that's the case. Um, she's also just, I don't know, is it's been in my mind for a while. Usually when I draft her, I'll play cube. Like, I find myself leaning towards is it spell slinger list. So I have it in my heart. I've never played it in Commander, though. It's like one of the only decks I've never shot for, I think. Um... Yeah, I almost did Gale, uh, that Gale list, like, similar to what you have, but, yeah, I just never got into Is it? She looks really cool. She is pretty cool. Uh, we're not yeah. talking about her today, though, so don't worry about that. Um, what's up, Struggling Chef? Not much. Just chilling, bitching about my week. I'm <laughs> trying to relax now. I, I was, like, literally, um, like, rode, motorcycle, got here, parked, fed the cats, set everything up, and, and here we are, so... I'm going to catch my breath. Uh, we've got some collector boosters to open. I would just say, like, two each, and then we move yeah. on? Yeah, okay. we can do that. Um, so on that note, uh, guys, uh, if you're just joining us, we're going to get into Satro the Infiltrator build in just a second. When we... When we... When we? When we? When we get packs from the Watsi gods, we like to open them on camera 
I think it's just more fun than opening them by ourselves in the dark, which is normally how I open my packs. Under the sheets. Just alone. <laughs> but no, this is not true. Um, but uh, I figured we could open a few of these in, in, on camera and then move on with our deck tech. And these are all from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So hopefully one of us pulls a saw true and we can just build it. Um, your stack feels thicker for some reason. I don't know what that means. That's okay. Your stack hmm. is your stack is thicker, sir. Um, let me. Trust me, it's thicker. Uh, I know, I know. It's the thicker. question is if we do pull a Satoru, are we gonna pull the Satoru, or are we gonna pull the Satoru? <laughs> I don't know which one I like better. I think I'm somewhat more fond of the standard Satoru, but we'll start with yours first. How about that? Oh but yeah, guys, uh, let us know how your week's going. If you're excited for the set, have pre-releases started yet, or is that, like, next week? Uh, or did I it happen? I think it's this week. I think it's uh, Friday today. Oh, no shit. Okay. Well, Sorry. You're... Technically Saturday because of midnight, but you know what I mean. What's thicker? This man's dick. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah, what I'm mean. build on 101 card EDH. I got a thick deck. <laughs> It, your your deck is thick, but it's like still pliant. It's hmm. interesting. Okay, can right, you hear so my this one mine first? This is yours first, so you get a treasure. Ooh, for that Magda, you're about to pull. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, fun flick of card. Yeah, another end. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. First, first Ooh, off, surgical oh. extraction. Yeah, that's a good card. It is. I'm a probably good card. never using it, but that's a, a good trade value card. Arcane Heist. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. Oh, it's the fun stuff. Hey! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Flint laughing, and Steel. Laughing Jasper Flint. Uh, is Maybe this is the double pack where you get the foil one right behind him. Eh, eh. No, okay, okay. No! Oh, no! Well, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> We've seen so many of these. I don't know what it is. Like, from at least Wilds of Eldraine, I can recall us pulling multiples of the same card in different variations in the same pack. I don't know what that's about. I wish that happened with the one ring. It didn't. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I would say our luck with the Lord of the Rings collectors were... Right? We opened Lord of the Rings collectors on camera. I don't remember them yeah. being great. Every other set's been pretty good, though. Yeah. Um, clear shot. Okay, Fierce Retribution. A lot of these cowboy... Ooh -hoo -hoo. I can trade that to you if you'd like. I know you're a planes guy. I, I am. I didn't know the lands looked this good from the set, dude. Yeah. We got the uh, the mana symbol in each art. The one I don't like is the forest because it's mm. it's in there, but it's like, oh look, here's a tree. <laughs> it's not anything fancy. All right, ooh, forsaken miner. Oh yeah, let the combo begin. Tumbleweed rising. Spinewood paladin. Oasis gardener. Uh. Cact tarantula, cact tarantula, and we should be back. Yeah. Well, you know, all I got to say is I already pulled everything that I wanted from the set. Let's go. Were you <laughs> just looking for the Forsaken Miner? No, that and Flint. That oh, and Flint. oh, nice. Okay, let's see what I'm, I can. I'm joking, of course. There's other cool cards from the set. There's so many amazing cards. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, <laughs> I feel like every color has multiple bangers. This is such a rare set for that. And in every rarity as well. Um, mercenary token, sweet. Uh, the back is a meteorite, by the way, just in case I decide yeah. to build Roxanne. Now the question is, what's more expensive, that token or the actual card meteorite? <laughs> Probably this token if Roxanne takes off. Um, Vanishing Verse, Exile Target, Mono Colored Permanent. Uh, I like this when this card came out. I still like it now. Yeah. We've got Skull Crack. Sadly, not Skull Clamp. Forger's oh. Foundry. Quick thing um, about that card, because someone said this is a, a another Isochron Scepter, worse, but another option. Mm. It's not, because you don't cast a copy, you cast the spell from Exile. Oh, I see, I see. It's still a really good card, I love that. Pillage the Bog. Uh, sword gonna have, uh, sword gonna happen? <laughs> sword gonna happen, how do you mean? Um, Botanical Sanctum, ooh -hoo. Uh, Terminal Agony, hold up, which one is this? This is a fast land? You can troll shoot, yeah, okay. Terminal Agony. Murder. 
There's the blue one. Yeah. Oh, I see the water symbol. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of slick. Bring out. Full steam ahead. Nurturing hey, it's pixie. The better Glenhawk. Strictly, strictly better Glenhawk. Yeah, by like a mile. Wrestler rampage. Outlaw medic. Uh, a braid. <laughs> a braided bluff. Someone targeted their own bluff. Desperate bloodseeker. And a geyser drake. As long as it's not your turn, spells you cast cost one less to cast. It's kind of sick. Okay, okay. This is a fine, fine pack so far. Not the best. Not the worst. Really hoping to see some bangers out off the bat here. It looks like the real catch cards are on the top. If anywhere. Um, all right. Well, this is your next, your next and last pack of the stream. Should we open these at the end of the stream? No, they're yeah, we could. Depends. Or we can open a bonus third one at the end. Mana Drain, look at fucking you. Yeah! Holy crap! Yeah, and the foil one, by the way. Oh, I didn't even notice that was foil. Yeah, yeah. I'm really Still looking... Can. Um, I think that Pub mentioned Mana Drain. I'm looking for a Mind Break Trap for myself, honestly. But may the odds be ever in your favor to get the Mana Drain? Well, Will did. Okay, so yeah. right, right side, just just better so far. <laughs> uh, hey, thunder. look, it's a goblin electromancer by like a mile. This one, thunder Yeah, because yeah, the goblin electromancer is the uh, is it your instants and sorceries cost one less? That is just mono blue. Your instants and sorceries cost one less, and also have commander Ooh. storm. Oil Roxanne. I might be building Roxanne at some point, so that's cool. It's really cool, actually. Buried in the garden. Nice, nice. Heartless Pillage. There's the black one. Or there's the swamp, I should say. Oh, I like swamp. You didn't like swamp? Oh, that card right there. I love this card. I yeah, really like this cool. card. Prairie Dog. Cutting Coyote. Thunder What's Salvo. The kind of form card? Uh, Barons, Jagged Barons. And Peerless Rope Master. Mm. Oh, ooh, ooh, oh, one more. One more. Uh, ankle Biter. Yeah. Is there more? Is there more? No, I think that's it. Wow. Okay. Well, Will, congratulations. Yeah, that Ben Drain is very hype. Yeah, I don't know what that reprint is worth. I feel like people always want Mana Drain, so it's probably somewhat valuable. Yeah. Okay, I'd God. Bet that. Huh? I bet that, yeah. I need a Mind Break Trap. Let's go. I'm looking at it. It doesn't look like Mind Break Trap. It's okay. Okay. I've got a treasure. Noise. What? How much is Mana Drain? Did you look it up? Uh, it's like 35 for uh, non-foil. <laughs> or like 33 for non-foil. Uh, Spire Bluff Canal. Uh, okay, that's, that's fine. I don't know if I really cared for future Western irrigation system, but I got it. Sup, not much. A uh, sword gonna happen, wealth and power. Oh god, that'd be amazing. Oh yeah. Uh, electro dominance, okay, okay. Some Ooh, dominance. That's a fun card if you're gonna build, uh, what's his name? Vadric. Yeah, but does Stella Lee care? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> we ride at dawn. And Spire Bluff Canal! Just, Again? Just double down on it, why don't I? Uh, free Ooh, Strider. Fun card. Free Strider Lookout? Yeah. That's the, the card that is commit a crime ramp. Oh shit, yeah, that one's actually really good. Repulse. Tyrant Scorn. Swamp. Ooh, the uh, new Ancestral Recall. Cool, cool. Call Marauder. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes one black for a 4-2 flyer. ETB, each uh, opponent discards a card, and you draw a card for each opponent who discards a card. God, I wish I pulled a Luffy, Nibiru. I wish I pulled a Luffy. Vile Smasher. <laughs> I didn't even realize Luffy was in this set. No, I, I, God, that'd be amazing. The Oda signed Luffy, please. Yes. Papa needs a new motorcycle. <laughs> That's so funny. My mom caught wind of that. Hi, mom, if you're watching. She was like, you're buying a new motorcycle? I'm like, no. What? What? <laughs> I'm fantasizing about buying a new I'm motorcycle. I'm only fantasizing about the new motorcycle. All right, Snakeskin Veil and Stagecoach Security. Yeah, okay, that pack was uh, not as spicy, but okay. All right. The, elect the uh, Electro Dominance is still pretty cool, though. Yeah, I wish that was the foil. 
<laughs> I don't know if I need these spire bluffs. Oh, that repulse is pretty sick. I don't know if I need two of these spire Just bluff canals. Um, all right. Oh, uh, yeah. Repulse is that. Yep, yep. I think we're ready. I think we're effectively ready. Are you guys yeah. ready? Do you want to build a deck? Well, hey, welcome to Local Game Group. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, your local game guy, joined by fellow local gamer and co-host Will. Hey, Will. What's up? So we're going to be discussing a new legendary from Outlaws of Thunder Junction, and his name is Satru, the Infiltrator. Uh, Demir, 2-3 body, human ninja, rogue, menace. Whenever Satru, the Infiltrator, and or one or more other non-token creatures enter the battlefield under your control, if none of them were cast or... No mana was spent to cast them, draw a card. So that could be a zero cost artifact creature. That could be a creature that is flickering into play, right? So your Narumea, ghostly flicker type of deal. Um, it could be a number of things. Uh, it could be like a displacer kitten setup where you're playing through spells and flickering to draw, right? Uh, basically, he's going to act as an outlet. So my major concern with this legendary is that he won't do much outside of being an outlet um, because some of the cards that are necessary for you to go off aren't really great outside of those play lines. So I'm going to what what we want to do and we'll I'll hand it off to you because there's there's a ton of different avenues of approach for this guy. We talked through a bunch of them during the stream. We stated during that legendary tier stream, which I highly recommend you check out if you haven't watched it yet, uh, and you can yell at us for some of our opinions, or you can applaud us for some of those opinions. But we determined at least like three to four different avenues of approach with Satru, all equally viable. Um, but I'm interested in knowing where you guys want to go. Obviously, this is a community build. Uh, we're going to be building this from the ground up, so your insight and your opinions are taken into account. But obviously, Will's here too. So, where do you see us going with this? What do you think has the best overlaps in strategy? Yeah, hit me. So the the three best options are um, the Joyra method, which is play artifact creatures, a little bit of cost reduction, and play through your whole deck, keep bouncing stuff to hand and replaying it. Um, Reanimator, which is just keep bringing the guys back from the graveyard to keep going, mm -hmm. or Flicker. Those are the three main things that you're going to see with Satoru. From my perspective, I think the two best are Reanimator and uh, Flicker. And the reason why is for Flicker, you have a lot of different things that are just Flicker cantrip, and then you can get some ETB value off of certain things, like Spellseeker does really dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but also on top of that, you have Narameha combos, you have a bunch of other things. It's not hard to do infinite flickers. And for the reanimator stuff, the reason why I like reanimator over the Joyra stuff is because the the Joyra combo requires you to get artifact creatures that cost zero or one if you have cost reduction. And then you storm off from there, keep bouncing them and replaying them. That's not always easy to consistently do because there aren't a ton of great artifact creatures that you can get out for that cheap but it's possible uh the reason why i like the reanimator side better is one good recursion for consistency and two you can play the x cost creatures that enter immediately kill themselves and then you can either reanimate them to try to get another draw or return all creature cards from your graveyard to your hand replay them all re-kill them all do that again and again and again so, I like the reanimator side a little bit because yeah, and this it gives is... you an excuse to play the zero drops that auto die. Right. We actually haven't talked about um, like persist combos. I think people mentioned someone in the audience, Trickster, is mentioning Cloudstone Curio. Uh, technically, there are probably Curio lines that, I mean, there are. They're just not. I don't think we're going to hit them consistently. Mention, Will mentioned. Deep... Oh. It's a deep wood legged specifically, yeah. plus another creature that enters the battlefield and makes mana equal to the mana you spent right. into so it. Like a so that you can, of gigs. Yeah. You can keep replaying deep wood legged to draw your deck because there's no non artifact creature that you can cast for free in Demir other than deep wood legged. Right. And I'll pull that up. Uh, this does require that your opponent have a forest. forest. And you control a swamp, but there's that guy. 
Uh, he's cute. He's got like some form of fire breathing, I guess. <laughs> Didn't know he was your type, Patrick. No, he's cute. He's cute. Uh, anything cute. from Mercadian Mask is cute, in my uh, my opinion. Pete Venters. Uh, yeah, this art this art's amazing. Are these all? Oh yeah, all the Deepwood cards are from Merc Mask, apparently. So, uh, Trickster, the reanimation stuff that we do is just the usual generic reanimation things that you'd see, like animate dead, reanimate unearth, anything like that. But optionally, we can also go for uh, we can also go for recursion from grave to hand for any of the zero cost creatures that auto die. So we can do like a kind of Anya pile as well. Well, so far as like effective A plus B combos. They're, I would say, far and few between. It's tricky because, you know, one of the best loops, and this is maybe A plus B plus more than that. Um, it's not corpse. It's, cor it's corpse dance. Yeah. Um, we would need to reanimate something that is going to be effectively giving us enough mana to cast this, right? And in these colors, we don't really get that. If there was a Dockside Extortionist and we are reanimating a creature, a clone creature that came into play and copied Dockside Extortionist, we could feasibly use Corpse Dance to, with a sack outlet, kill it, reanimate it, buy it back, kill it, reanimate it, buy it back. Right, repeat that. Um... This isn't going to work with the Priest of Gix, sadly. The other line of play that we, you know, we would obviously want to go towards is something like a Lean and Relic Warder slash Animate Dead, right? That kind of recursion loop. Sadly, we're not an Orzov for this. So I don't know. There is a creature, a three cost black creature that exiles target creature yeah. returns. Um, I just forget its name, and we're going to find it right now. It's like this... Nope, it's not that. Exile, creature, return. Uh, I know what the art looks like. I don't remember the name. It's not Faceless Devour. Uh, but th I think there is a mono-black version of the okay, same okay. combo. It's just not it's as efficient. Hunter. Yeah, it's just not as efficient. It's an older card, too. Oh, it's going to kill me. Where, where, uh, well, I'm going to find it. But uh, we could also do, if I'm not mistaken, like a Forsaken Miner line of play. There are some low-cost recursion creatures that we could potentially use. Yeah. The the thing with the Forsaken Miner is Satoru is usually a... is unnecessary as part of the combo because if you're doing mm -hmm. Brexing Altar, Forsaken Miner, and... Uh, Blood Artist or Zulaport, whichever one targets, then um, you're doing infinite damage off of that. You don't need Satoru at that point. You're just winning the game. So I don't think we need Forsaken Miner stuff. It's not Faceless Devourer. This is killing me. I can't remember the name of this guy. There's another one. Faceless Butcher. Exile another creature? Maybe I was wrong. This is what I was thinking of, though. Can you guys see this? I'm sorry. Yeah. Faceless butcher. Um, it's not gonna. That's not gonna do it. It's okay. Well, on that note, then I think that our flicker lines are probably gonna be best for us. Dawn All of right. the Dead uh, at the beginning of your upkeep. No. Uh, and like Displacer Kitten being a member of the flicker lineup, right? Whenever you cast non creature spell, exile target. Blah blah bloop. Uh, Blood artist targets. We can run it. Uh, with Vein Ripper 2, technically. You talking about Faceless Butcher? I think I was, yeah. It was, uh, no, Josh. The, um, the Miner, Forsaken Miner, I think. Uh, no, I was trying to bring up Faceless Butcher, though. You're right, though. It, yeah. It's those two, and I really thought that this one didn't, uh, it would allow self-targeting. Or, uh, not self-targeting. I thought it would allow for me to remove, um... Enchantments. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought there was one in these colors, but I guess I was wrong. It's been a while since I've looked into these kind of play lines. They're they're a little finicky. So uh, for sure, we we want to consider exile. Wait, enters the battlefield exile it unless you discard a creature card. And exile. I remember this used to be a part of like Hulk piles in odd colors. Body snatcher. I don't think it's something we need. Body snatcher dies. Exile it and return target card for you. No, I'm not gonna use that. Okay. Um, Blood Artist targets. I mean, 
are we trying to incorporate a line of play that uses blood artist for crimes uh, with our boy? I don't think we need with Forsaken artist. Miner. Okay. Uh, this is the new guy we were talking about. We'll just literally pull it, but whenever you commit a crime, you can pay one. So the clear card to work with this is Frexian uh, Alter, right? So sack it, make it black. And then your blood artists would go off, right? Again, you don't really need Satru for this at all. Uh, so, and I don't like adding utilities that are solely there to allow for play lines like this to occur. Like if I was going to incorporate a sack outlet, I would make sure that the sack outlet is doing something important and or just winning the game or, you know, playing for this. But then, you know, if we need to commit crimes, then blood artist is there for that. So, you know, if we're just drawing into uh, cards casually, then it's not so bad. But are there any, uh, before we actually look into proper play lines, I guess what I want to look at are, I want to look at our land base still, because we haven't even looked at the deck yet. It is in the link in the description. Ignore the land base for now. There are some cards that are going to be swapped out. It was a copy and paste land base as, as, as usual, but uh pitiless plunderer. Um, but what I want to do is... You can do Pitiless instead of uh, Phyrexian Halter. It's just anything that lets <laughs> you sacrifice the miner. We're not doing minor lines in this deck, though, I don't think. No, I don't think so. But I do like Pitiless Plunderer. Thank you for the suggestion. If you do want to incorporate it, you, you most certainly can. There's a special guest version of him. I didn't know that. All right. It was from the past set, I think. Just oh, the shit. previous one that we went through. Um, well, we definitely want to displace your kitten, but I, I kind of want to just look over some ninjutsu cards to see if there's any good ones. Uh, only because it's um, it's not technically being cast, right? So return an unblocked creature, put this card onto the battlefield, blah blah bloop. Uh, isn't there a card that gives other ninjas ninjutsu? Uh, gives all cards in your hand ninjutsu for four, but uh, four mana to do it. No, 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 we don't want that then. Um, I mean, maybe we want, maybe we want some ninjutsu users. Um, the other thing I want to look at are some free to play or low cost creatures that we could potentially slot to the list, but I think no matter what, we're always running the ornithopter memnites and those things. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we'd start incorporating them now. Ornithopter, ornithopter memnite. Uh, Phyrexian Walker and Field Sphere. Phyrexian Walker. Okay. Shield Sphere. And this and is probably, all... Hmm? Probably Deep would like it, just because that is a good card for the deck in general. Right. Um, I don't think we're trying to add fast knowledge with this list. I think we're trying to manipulate some of these lobby creatures for our, our proper play lines. Um... I think Culling the Weak is obviously going to be good here. I also think that uh, Diabolic Intent would be very good here. I'm just going to get rid of like the Saka shitty creature do a thing cards in here. I'm not necessarily trying to stack our rituals and or tutors into the list right now. Um, but those are notable for the simple fact that we're using uh, low to no cost creatures here. Um, are there no other zero cost creatures we can incorporate? Sadly, there again... Are no, there are no ones that stick around. We could also run like Walking Ballista, Stone Coil, Serpent, Hangerback Walker, all those that insta-die. Subtlety? Oh, you want to run uh, Evokers? Wait, what's... Oh, 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 what does Subtlety do? Did I spell that wrong? I think I did. Okay. Uh, enters the battlefield, choose one target creature spell, uh, or Planeswalker spell, its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their owner's library. We can run that. Yeah. I don't see why not. What's the black uh, so one? The, the evoke does count as casting it, but you're not paying any mana for it, so it's still good. Right. What What is the black equivalent? Uh, um, grief. Is grief any, is grief any good? Grief, uh, discard a card, and you get a look at their hand. So it's a dress for zero. Mm. Do you want it? It's not bad. It does still mess with people's hands, and it's a card draw for us, even though we're going down a card in hand. 
Yeah, that's true, but we should be drawing a card in the aftermath, so it's not like the end of the world, right? It's going to replace yeah. itself. So it's essentially like a rummage. Also, the evokers are really good with any flicker effect, because if you flicker them before they evoke, then they stay around permanently. Oh, that's kind of cute. So yeah, you just have like... That's a whole modern thing. That's what everybody does in modern. Grief and uh, subtlety getting bounced off Displacer Kitten. Yeah, it's just like, I casually play them. Okay, I flicker it. Cool, now I got a zero mana, three, two... What is it? Death Touch? I can't remember what grief is. Menace? Fear? Uh, I think it's Menace. Something. Menace. Yeah, four, four costs, uh, three, two. Oh, the all-important... The all-important RuPaul's Drag Race needs to be paused. I I totally forgot. As the Friday ritual continues, um, uh, yes, it does. Do we care about putting bad cards as long as they're free? That is the question, because we could theoretically just run all the self-kill boys. Uh, well, I'm going to leave the screen on... Uh, what? What's your favorite card? Tell me a card to leave it on so you can talk about it. Uh, Gemini Rabbit. Okay. Oh, nope, I spelled that wrong. Uh, I might have also said it wrong. Could be uh, something else, Rabbit. It's. Is it. Ba I think it's. Battery Rabbit? <laughs> no, no, no. Hold up. I'll. I'll Zodiac that. Rabbit. Zodiac, that's what it was. All right, looks yeah, like. Yeah, this, this is apparently some random card as we were playing a game. I'll be right it back, just Will. Kept coming up. <laughs> I need to pause this thing. But yeah, feel free to talk through. Guys. Guys. I'm going to pause this RuPaul, but seriously. <laughs> uh, what play lines did you want to incorporate that you think are worthwhile? I do think we're going to uh, incorporate the Naromea flicker lines in just a second. Um, if there are any other flicker creatures outside of Naromea and blue, I think there has to be a new one. Let us know. Dead if, Eye Navigate also really good. Dead Eye <laughs> with, um, with who? Anything that makes mana or untaps lands. All right, we'll put Priest of Gix in. We're getting a lot of creatures that are kind of shit by themselves. We also need to think about... Um, remember, it's non-token creatures, so something like an Orcish Bowmaster is still fine. All right, I'll be back. <laughs> My mind's awash with thoughts on this one. All right, but yes, Zodiac Rabbit. Fun, dumb green card. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason it thought... I can't even remember what the card it was. was a Zodiac Rabbit. What is it? Uh, Manamo? I think it's Manamo or something like that. Spell table spawn. Yeah. Uh, rich... What is that? Is that Rich Defend? Rich. Uh, so Rich, yeah. Um... Peregrine Drake is probably, uh, is Peregrine Drake the 7 mana one or the 5 mana one? I friggin' misspelled it. It's E, not A. Yeah, Peregrine Drake, uh, I'd recommend Peregrine Drake. I'd do the, uh, Cloud of Fairies. Priest of Gix is another good one. Um, P Priest of Gix does not go... Does not do the thing with Dead Eye Navigator though, but it makes it so that you can pay one blue and then you draw a card and get two black. So it's still good. It'll hopefully get you there because it gives you enough mana that you can probably find a tutor and then win the game. So I'd still do Priest of Gix in the deck. Welcome back. Welcome back. Wait, what I miss? Uh, we were talking about things that go infinite with Dead Eye Navigator. Um, I guess, like, the Cloud of Fairies was one we talked about yeah. before. Cloud of um, Fairies, Peregrine Drake, and, um... Sorry, give me one second. Uh, Priest Cloud. of Gix, while not going infinite, does still storm off, because you're paying one blue to get two black and draw card. Cloud of Fairies, Peregrine Drake... We don't want to go Palancron big, right? No, because Peregrine Drake's the biggest that we probably want to go, because whenever we cast a spell, we get... Or whenever we cast a flicker, we draw a card and get five mana. Priest of Gix, and this is all with Deadeye. Yeah. Um, is Priest there... of Gix isn't infinite, but it's Storm. <sighs> really hard Storm. Is there a good Buried Alive pile for this setup? Uh, outside of the normal stuff? No. 
Not that I think of. Not that I can think of. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oromancer, um, sorry, I'm just gonna catch up with some of your oh, comments. Uh, uh, Spellseeker as well. I know that we don't have that in the deck yet, so Spellseeker is good. Spellseeker, Ghostly Flicker. Yeah, we could just do the Naromea Ghostly Flicker thing in here. Um... Probably not good enough. No, Norme is still good enough. I, I, I still think that it's good enough. Oromancer, Ghostly, Prison, and Peregrine Drake. Oromancer... How, how does Oromancer work again? Oromancer's guys? Can't be what you mean. Okay. We have Iso Rev combo. Which... Line, we're just making infinite mana with Iso Rev. Yeah, I don't think we need Iso Rev. Yeah, I don't know if I want Iso, uh, Isochron combo. Unless we just want to stick a good flicker effect to the staff. Like, it's just free draw. Free draw. It's. Cheap draw. It's cheap draw. <laughs> if the thing also cantrips. Let me look up effects like uh, Naramea. Enter, battlefield, copy, spell. All right, I just want to look that up really quick to see if there's any other creatures that do that, because we got to have more than Naru at this point. It does not look like it. A Seagate Stormcaller. The Master. Let me see this. God, Naru, you're the one. Enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature? Nope. Damn, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, wow. Uh, get the Wizard Tutor from Modern Horizons. Uh, was it Wizard Cycling? What What is the name of the card, though? I, I think I know what you're talking about. I think there's a few Wizard Cyclers, by the way. Um, I don't want that. Okay, so Step Through and Videlkin Ether Mage. Are we on Videlk and Aether Mage? That feels a little too high costed. I'm kind of down for step through though. Uh... Archaeo Archaeomancer, Ghostly Flicker, and Drake. Uh, Archaeomancer is the uh, four mana EP. It recovers it right. Through graveyard to your hand. Yeah. Um, it doesn't cast it though, right? So what's the yeah. goal here? We it's just so value with, a, with Drake. You keep oh. getting back the flicker to make infant man and draw your deck okay uh micromancer is also pretty good it's just a spell seeker but you find one cost thing instead of a two or less it's worse spell seeker but it still does what we want it's probably fine give infinite casts with displacer kitten displacer kittens in there um give infinite casts yeah that's oh, true yeah, that's um, that's the other part of our Mancer. we keep getting back a spell from our graveyard that we can recast to do a thing so if we get like Dark Ritual. Cast Dark Ritual, flickering or Kaomancer, drawing a mm -hmm. card. Cast Dark Ritual, flickering or Kaomancer, draw a card. Cast Dark Ritual, flickering or Kaomancer, draw a card. Repeat, repeat, repeat. What was the name of that guy we were just looking at? Um, it's interesting. If we did run a copy creature with those Fiend Hunter creatures, that would technically work, right? I think you need uh, two originals and one copy effect to make it work, because at some point you're going to have a setup where you don't... Actually, no. Yeah, it works. You can theoretically do it, but there's only like one to two real options for an initial thing, so it's faceless a lot of copy effects. Devour and Faceless Butcher. Exile another creature with Shadow. Yeah, so, if so I had a, not happening. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if I had a clone copy come in... It would have shadow. Yeah. I saw the target creature with shadow when it leaves the battlefield. Oh yeah, we couldn't do it with just two though. Uh, yeah, you need two. Do you? Can you do it with just two? You need a uh, three in total because one exiles the other, returning the third. The third exiles that one, returning that one. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, Micromancer was a uh, one card that is probably worth running though I the think worst I, case scenario it finds a tutor for us i think i put micromancer in there yeah we're good yeah. on worm. worm fang drake uh says joshua all right look at worm fang drake uh okay 
uh, three cost. The battlefield, sacrifice the most exile a creature you control other than this one. This leaves the battlefield to return that creature. Oh, okay. It's another fiend hunter for our combo. Yeah, that's funny. I, I totally missed this. I feel like I looked this up, didn't I? I Man, I like how this card was like, oh yeah, I am so old that no one knows I exist to like, oh yeah, I came out in the previous set. Right, it does, the the art for this one is a little misleading. Um, so there's the third creature. So our buried pile. <laughs> we would need to reanimate all these things. Mm. Well, one of them only exiles a creature with shadow, so... Mm -hmm. It's that one's not working, but we can do uh, any copy creature as well. But yeah, we need a full reanimate package for that. Let's take a step back, gang. So we're going to clean up our land base here. Uh, there are some castles in here. You can ignore them. Cabal Pit is probably still fine. Blast Zone can go. Sorry. Um, Mystic is a. Uh... This Mystic is a that could potentially be removed from it. Mystic Sanctuary? Yeah, Mystic Sanctuary could probably be removed because we don't have a ton of islands in the deck. Right. Ignore some of the inclusions in the land base here, by the way. Um ba -ba -ba -ba, gemstone caverns. Do we have uh, all the Also uh we can probably add in staples because I think at like doing the staples a little bit earlier before we add in the rest of our Game plan is probably smart because we don't need to go full blown, but just getting the setup is probably a good I'm idea. I'm sorry, this the staple cards, yeah, like um, Ristic Study, Mystic Grimora, Cyclonic Rift, Force of Will, those kind of things are, are mana rocks. Yeah, I, I would love to get those basics out of the way so we can really hard focus on the combos and play lines we're looking for. Uh, things like City of Traders, Ancient Tomb that don't feel necessary either. Uh, we're gonna be down to 25 lands in a second though, so. Yeah, and we do need to have a, uh, a Highlander land base so that we can do Tainted Pact. Look, I I don't... Uh, I'll just do Demonic Consultation Tainted Pact right now. Yeah. Um, I don't mind having Ancient Tomb if we intend to use two CMC Mana Rocks, but I don't think we do. Probably not. How low? Uh, okay, so we could we could take this out then. This also, is weird. Uh, hoarding Broodlord was brought up as a an option for stuff because ETB tutor uh, that we can constantly flicker. Thoughts, feelings on hoarding Broodlord as a potential combo line for this list. What is the best play for hoarding Broodlord? Uh. So we could potentially do we can do Hoarding Broodlord finding Saw in Half, use Saw in Half finding Sacrifice, and then maybe like a Yogmoth or something like that. Yogmoth's will. Um mm -hmm. something that just lets us cast a few of the things from our graveyard. Um then we can use that to do Saw in Half again. Sawn have to find uh, our Naru our Narumea combo or Displacer Kitten or something. Actually, Displacer Kitten. Screw everything I said. You find Displacer Kitten and then just keep tutoring every single time that you play a card. So you just play your whole deck and draw your whole deck with Displacer Kitten and Broodmaster. So, Mateus is just mentioning Activated Sleeper. Yeah, let me see here. Oh, never mind. It's from the battlefield. Okay. Oh, excuse me. All right. So you wanted to do Hoarding Broodlord into Sacrifice Saw in Half. Um, sacrifice. Displacer Kitten's in the deck. And Displacer Kitten, it wouldn't have the original copy to bounce, though. Oh, your audio cut out, Will. Can you hear me? Sorry, was muted. Yeah. We can do uh, Hoarding Broodlord for uh, just Displacer Kitten, no saw and half needed. And that's enough to just go boom, 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 boom. Hmm. 
because we do that, we find all of our fast mana, play all of our fast mana, we have a ton of mana left over, then we can play, let's say, Demonic Consultation, Flicker with Displacer Kit and Finding Oracle, Exile our deck, play for Oracle, win, or anything else. It's just draw our deck, win the game. Yeah, we didn't lose volume. I muted myself because somebody walked into my room and uh, forgot to unmute. <laughs> Uh, before we complete our lands, let's get all the core cards out of the way. So I didn't add any of... I, so I added our two draw utilities. I added the Tainted Pact, Demonic Consultation, Thalsa's Oracle, Hoarding Broodlord, Saw in Half, Sacrifice. I'm going to put Entomb. I'm going to put Reanimate. I'm going to put Animate Dead. I'm going to put Dance of the Dead? With the Dead? Of the Dead. Yeah. Dance of the Dead. I'm not going to add Necromancy. I'm sorry. I just don't really care about the Flash. Um... But what are some other core cards you can think of? Let's start with our mana base. So mana crypts, mana vault. I'm, I'm gonna the add mana, it. Mana vault, all of the moxes, and literally all of the moxes this time. Like mox amber is actually good here. I think we'll we'll yeah, hit mox it. Mox might Let's go. <laughs> mox opal. I'll put Mox Opal. We'll see if we get there. Mox Diamond, Mox Amber, Mox Opal, Lotus Petal. Jeweled Lotus is it's fine. I know it, it's weird, but it's fine. Um, it's Lotus Petal for most of our purposes. And uh, stops yeah. Commander attacks one time. I mentioned this card the other day with Mateus, actually, but Jeweled Amulet is not a bad card. If you need to piggy bank it, but like I would frankly, with this particular list, I would, only being two colors, I think we can kind of cheese it. Uh, there aren't any... Okay, so we need Dark Ritual. We need Cabal Ritual. Maybe not need, but we would like it. Any other rituals you can think of for Fast Manor? I don't know how much Fast Manor we're going to need, because theoretically we can... We're going to be playing a bunch of low-cost stuff. We're pretty low to the ground on a lot of our game plan, other than the Peregrine Drake and Deadeye. Yeah, which are hopefully going to be reanimated. I mean, honestly, um, um might discard wanna... text is something we probably want as well. So, entomb, uh, frantic search, right. um, frantic search, uh, any sort of card quality effects. I also like the um, unmarked grave. You know, we bring this one up a lot. I like this card a lot. Let's do our tutors really quickly. I'll just do my demonic tutor, a pyrrhic tutor, um, imperial seal. Wish Claw Talisman. And what other one? Do we want to do the four cost one? Beseech the Mirror. What does Beseech hit? Uh, Beseech can get Displacer Kitten. You sure? Yeah, four mana or less. It's, I thought it was five. What the fuck? No, it's four. Wow. Or Narumea, which doesn't work with its sorcery speed, but you know. Well, wait. What does it work with its? No, it doesn't. Ah, oh, damn it. I mean, I guess we could put Born Upon a Win. Displace your kitten, Brood Lord. Sounds so nasty. Keep tutoring for cheap spells to convoke. Yeah, the Displace yeah. your kitten. Hell yeah. Uh, also, um, Ghostly Pilfer is probably good enough. It does occasional draw, and it's a discard outlet for whenever we find our big stuff. It's just generically good enough. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, sorry, no more tutors for us, right? We've got Spell Seeker already. We've got. Mm. And uh, we even use the Wizard Cycler, right? Step through. I think we need that for Naramea. I'm not going to use the Vidalcan Ether Mage. That's a bridge too far. I, I think being in Demir means we just have quality when it comes to tutor effects, so I don't necessarily need a three cost tutor. Uh, careful study is also potentially good. It's just a, what's it called? Faithless looting without the flashback. Are you looking into, um, what do you have that you're looking at right now? Are you looking at, um, discard, discard utilities? Okay. Mystical tutor. Yeah. Thank you. I knew there was one I was missing minimally personal tutor because we could potentially have. draw. I know, but like it's, it's, it's specifically sorcery. Mm, is there a core sorcery card we want? We save this out. 
I don't know, personal tutor wouldn't be the end of the world. I mean, again, we, we have much better tutors, but we are able to draw whatever it is, hopefully, off the top of our deck. So maybe there's cause for it, but I don't know. You know, maybe I should add Peer into the Abyss, by the way, if we're going to do this whole thing. All right, let's add some interaction. Uh, I guess we just start with our spells, like this spell. This spell right here, nope. Th oh, Jesus. Dispel, Swan Song, Mental Misstep, Oop, Force of Will, Force of Negation, Mind Break, Trap. We're not going to use Mana Drain. Sorry, Will. Oh, dang. I just pulled one, too. Uh, did you want it? We could use it if you want. Um, <laughs> uh, what's it called? An Offer... An offer, offer you can't, you can't refuse. refuse. What are some of your favorite counterspells, Will? Uh, do we have Pact of Negation in there already? I don't, do we need Pact of Negation for this deck? Is it trying to go guns a-blazing? Uh, it's just a good safety when you're trying to go off, but it, I don't know how the deck's going to play. It could legitimately go either way, which is usually not something that you'll see in most decks. Yeah. Um, Cabal Fury Sub Mental Misstep... Thank you, guys. Uh, fierce Guardianship's great. Um, oh, yeah, Fierce Guardian. Yeah. Uh, Deadly Rollick is also probably something we're yeah, going to want to run at some that. point. Um, Limdul's Vault. Um, no, and yeah, no question marks there, Josh. Limdul's Vault is amazing. You should still yeah. be running Limdul's Vault now. It's a, it's a very good card. Uh, thank Tutor you for the... Opposition agent, let's go. Yeah, thank you for the mention. We're going to use the Alliance's version 2, because that's the best one. Uh, uh, Mental Misstep Delay, I like. Uh, Necropotence isn't bad if you want to run Born. Uh, that's true. If we do run Born upon a wind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Grim Tutor, I'm going to skip on it, it. It's just a little too costly for me. Oh. I can't help but feel I'm missing counter spells. Um, what is the one that counters two cost spells? Spell Snare. Yeah, Spell Snare. I like Spell Snare. And I've got Dispel. Do I have Miscast? I guess we add Miscast if we want. Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, Dispel. Dispel. We've got issues with. We've got issues with Dispel. Um, yeah, we can talk about our removal suite now. So, Resculpt is good, I think, in Demir. I like that one. Resculpt is good. Dress Down is good. Um, what is the, what is the, it's not a Vogue channel. Isn't there a good blue channel spell? That's not a land. Um, do we the have land the, is good. Ottawara, which do, do we have a land base right now? We should oh. probably run it because yeah. that's an old land base that I sent you really old. That's okay. Um, that's okay. Yeah. We definitely want Ottawa. There's moon snare prototype as a blue channel effect. Isn't this also... Isn't this also a... Oh, never mind. That's a little too costly. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Right. Uh, ooh, Misdirection's good. I, thank you for Misdirection. Because we're not uh, really concerned with, like, ad nauseum. Uh, yeah. Mana cut here. Down is also a good black removal spell. I like Cut Down. Uh, how do you feel about March of Swirling Mist? Okay, Will likes it. Okay. I, we're really close to 100 cards here. So we've got some things to potentially remove. I'm going to leave our land base at 26. I think that's probably fine. Am I wrong? Am I crazy? Oh, uh, also, Mystic and Ristic. No, no, they're there. They're there. Okay, good, good, good. Mystic, Ristic, Dress Down, Dance of the Dead, Animate Dead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chain of Vapor Snap. I guess we could use Cyclonic Rift as well. Snap is less useful when you don't have a... We need to put, like, our Essence Flux effects in here, by the way. Um, but yeah, we could do Chain of Vapor for sure. Um, I don't... Do you want Snap here? Or Wash Away? Um... 
Wash away is pretty good. I think we can remove the counter spells that uh, let people pay taxes through them. Because I think our deck isn't going to be super fast. And those are really good when you're playing a fast deck. Yeah, we'll look over the whole of them in a second. Uh, dismember, Fatal Push. I'll do the Dismember for now. And I'll also do a Snuff Out just to fill up our roster here. So this should conclude all of our fast mana, all of our counter magic, all of our removal suite, um, all of our bounce spells. We want to look at exile, return, instant, or sorcery. Battlefields at the instant and sorcery slot. Um, okay. So Essence Flux obviously just works with Naramea. Um, I don't know if that makes it good enough, but it's fine. Shallow yeah, Grave. For our deck, it's definitely good enough. Is there a Shallow Grave playline? If we had a Cost Reducer, Phyrexian Altar, and Archaeomancer. Uh... Phyrexian Altar to make one black, sacrifice Archaeomancer, you know, bring this back. That's too many extra steps and too many dead cards. Well, it's three cards. And Archaeomancer's in the deck. Phyrexian Altar's not. Shallow Grave is yeah. not. And I, I'm not even sure if we care about Shallow Grave too much. Mm. No, I, I don't, personally. Um, I'm just illustrating a combo. It's three cards, though. I, I don't necessarily want to go for that. Illusionist Stratagem is too costly. Ghostly Flicker is fine. I think Flicker is in our deck. I know I added Essence Flux. Um, there aren't that many flickers, are there? Exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If it's a pirate, um, draw a card. It won't be, but that's fine. Silent, uh, Siren's Ruse. Mm. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control, then in XF if the creature is, uh, enters the battlefield, plus one, plus one counter. Teferi's Time Twist. I, I don't think we need any of the two cost ones. I think the three cost target two things is a, a good option. And just then the, essence uh, and es essence and ghostly. Yeah. Okay. That seems fair. Okay. Uh, so those are added. Cloudstone Curio for the zero drops. Unfortunately, the zero drops we have are are predominantly artifacts. And um, for those who don't know, because a lot of people do forget this, Cloudstone Curio says when a non-artifact permanent enters your battlefield, bounce so a annoying. permanent that shares a type with it. I'm just going to put up the best one. Yeah, this card looks so amazing. Um, especially in person. God, this card. I hate, yeah, this, this, uh, down there. I get it. I just ignore, ignore the artist. Ignore the artist. I'm sorry. But, uh... Mm -hmm. We hmm? could do Cloudstone Curio if we wanted, because we do have Deepwood Legate and the zero cost creatures, the the zero costs, the cloud cloud fairies and all that. So we could do Cloudstone Curio if we wanted to, because we have options to combo with it. Also, it's not a bad grindy card here and there. Mm. Just return to hand. Yeah. Because we do E D B stuff here and there. So I it's interesting it's, it's like a combo card with Deepwood though. It's cute though, because like whenever a non artifact permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may return another permanent. We could return our zero cost creatures this way still. Yeah. So sure. The answer is sure. Uh and uh Joshua was saying that displace is okay but not amazing. I kind of agree with that because it only hits creatures and we only care about blinking one creature at a time. Let's look at our deck. There's 104 cards in it. I just want to see where we're at and then sort of establish what play lines that are existing currently in the list. Druid Lotus, Lotus Petal, Mana Crypt, Mox Amber, Mox Diamond, Mox Opal. Yeah. Um, we don't have Soul Ring in the list. We could probably add Soul Ring. Never hurts. Let's do that before we continue. Am I wrong? Soul Ring's a good card, right? Soul Ring's good. Do people still play it? They will to the end of time. 
Okay, so we got to cut five cards minimally, but we're pretty close to having a fully established deck. Okay. Those are all good. Uh, Cloudstone Curio. Ramp. Sorry, I just really like this art. I'm sorry. Okay, step through, peer into the abyss, beseech the mirror, buried alive, diabolic intent, unmarked grave, demonic tutor, careful study, draw two cards and just two cards, discard two cards from your hand. That's not bad. I feel like that might be one of the first things on the chopping block, but I don't think we're there yet, Will. We've got 26 lands, and honestly, I feel like we could probably rock 26. Do we have Arcane yeah. Signet or um, Grim Monolith? No, Josh. Grim is maybe a bridge too far. Two for three in this list. It's more relevant when you're trying to play a pile from a ad nauseum hand. Uh, I think we're just trying to quickly establish some form of infinite draw engine. Yeah. I think we could probably cut Priest of Gix just because it isn't directly a combo. It's just a efficient creature. So we can probably cut it and not gear. Mr. Gix? I mean... Doesn't he work with Cloudstone Curia? Do we did we add it? Oh, we did add it in the end. Never mind. Yeah, I yeah. didn't see that we added it in the end. No, that's okay. Misdirection, Force of Will, Snuff Out, Mindbreak Trap, Deadly Relic, Dismember, Fierce Guardianship, Force of Negation, Frantic Search. I, I still like Frantic Search. Um, Frantic Search. Evoke uh, can save your commander for removal with it as well. The evokes. Mm hmm It could. Technically could. So on half, uh, there is a combo in the deck for it. Ghostly Flicker, Frantic Search, I've mentioned. Uh, Cabal Ritual, Cyclonic Rift, Delay, Limdol's Vault, Resculpt, and Tainted Pact. Cut down I like. Dispel is good. Sacrifice is really strictly there for any sort of play line that is going to be off of Hoarding Broodlord. We're not really looking at Sacrifice for anything else. Do you think it's good enough, Will? Well, it's there for the Peer into the Abyss combo. If we wanted, we could just cut Saw in half and cut Sacrifice, and we're probably fine. Let's see what else we've got we're working with first. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of with you there. Spell Snare, Swan Song, Vampiric Tutor, Pact of Negation. Okay. All of these look good. The enchantments look good. Creatures now. Uh, I think we're playing a reanimator list. We should think about Consecrated Sphinx, Hallbreaker, Horror, Razaketh, and maybe Necrotic Ooze Lines, possibly. Definitely not I'm as fine easy for the whole horrors because if we have a zero cost creature, we draw our deck. So I'm kind of fine with doing the Tides of Tyrant, Hallbreak Horror stuff. Um, Razaketh, we could also do Razaketh things, but... Well, is this all we have, though? Just these four zero-costers? Yeah. There's no other options out... Well, also Deep would like it, but uh, there's no other options in Demir for a zero... Or a zero-mana creature that enters the battlefield and lives. All the other ones enter and die. Whenever you cast an on creature fox, that's one turn longer than return that card to the battlefield. What are the best displacer kitten lines, and what are the best hull breaker horror lines? So displacer kitten in our deck is not a combo card; it's more of a storm card. Every single time we cast a card, we draw a card. Um, with a hull break horror, if we have fast mana, then we make infinite mana, and if we have a zero cost creature, we draw our deck. With the infinite mana, then we're still drawing your deck, so it's yeah. pretty good. Peregrine Drake is here just to be Cloudstone fodder, essentially, right? Yeah. It was also potentially in there for Corpse Dance stuff, but it's there for fodder. If we wanted, we could uh, we could probably cut Peregrine Drake. Also, um, Drake is a really good flicker card, because every single time we flicker it, we get X amount of mana off of it. Right. How do you feel about Cloud of Fairies, then? Cloud of Fairies is better just because it's a cheap ETB. It's good with Deadeye Navigator. It just wins off of Deadeye right. Navigator. Right, Dead, Deadeye only 
plays into those two though and that is technically a way to win the game dead eye slash yeah. cloud of fairies there's no way to dual reanimate those though green is kind yeah, of the color it, of putting two creatures into play at the same time so what is the cleanest way to get to dead eye navigator cloud of fairies on the we battlefield could probably cut our dead eye navigator stuff to yeah. do uh to do I'll break horror or something instead. I would kind of prefer that. Just, just if we're gonna lean, I think that the strength of this legendary is the fact that he'll draw off these shitty little creatures. I, I gotta double check. This is killing me. I can't. I also, can't. I'd, I'd still want to keep Cloud of Fairies and Priest of Gix in the deck just for the Cloudstone Curio line. Oh, for but sure, if we for want sure. Cut Cloudstone Curio, we can cut those as well. I don't hate Cloudstone Curio though, because like once we lay the egg, we get to pick these back up and just recast them. So it's almost like pseudo storm with displacer kitten, but just not quite as good. <laughs> not quite as good at all. Fairy is also good with Cloudstone. Yes, thank you. Um, displacer is good with Tavesh, for sure. Uh, if we had a uh, dead eye uh, with Drake, yeah. I think that we can cut those pretty easily. Not easily necessarily. I, I just don't like them as much. I don't think they're as efficient as some of the other things we could be doing. I do think Tide Spout, Hullbreaker are gonna be here. Do we need or and or want both? Um, I think just hull break is fine because we're not going to consistently find the setup to do infinite mana, but, uh, having one is good. Hull break is the better of the two. Why would you go for hull breaker horror over hoarding brood Lord and vice versa? Uh, with, if, if you have a reaction effect and assume, the fast assume, mana, you yeah. always go for hull break horror. If you don't have the fast mana setup, you go for hoarding brood lord because the setup for hoarding brood lord is a little bit harder. So yeah, that the starting hand has an tomb reanimate the fast mana and the land to play out Sautru. You just go for hull breaker, right? Yeah, pretty much every time. And if we don't have the fast mana stuff, then we go for uh for hoarding brood lord. Part of me a... just part of me just wants to kick the brood lord line and just go for double double down on tight spout and hoarding brood lord. It's double down on tight spout tyrant and the hallbreaker horror. Well, the one reason why I like hoarding brood lord over the the other lines is. Hoarding Broodlord can win the game just by itself because it will find Displacer Kitten. Displacer Kitten will let you keep flickering Hoarding Broodlord and go deeper and deeper and deeper into your deck. With Tide Spout, Tyrant, Hellbreak, Horror, you specifically need fast mana, and then you specifically need one of the zero mana creatures to replay over and over and over again. So it's a lot harder of a setup. Broodlord is a a safer setup, but when you do have the setup, you go for the other two instead. I mean, we've got a lot of zero cost things, technically. We've got 10, specifically, 2, 4, 6, 11, with Deepwood Legged. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> also Priest of Gix, and also Cloud of Fairies. So it's not overly difficult to just draw a lot with Displacer Kitten. Hmm. All right, let me just add the Hullbreaker Horror. I do agree with that. I think that that makes sense. Give me one second. Let's find what we're kicking, though. Yeah. I do think we're at that point where the list is kind of coming to fruition. Um. Again, you know, I'm just going to illustrate one of the things that we could be doing. Um, give me your favorite persister, Will. My favorite persist creature? Yeah. Uh, the freaking Manticore. Don't remember its name, though. Lesser oh, Manticore? Oh, I think it's Lesser Masticore. Masticore, yeah. Yeah, Lesser Masticore. Um, again, won't work with Cloudstone Curio, but that's okay. Uh, we could just be setting up a persist line, right? So it could just be this creature enters with blah, but like it's always three cards, sadly. So, would you do you think that ignoring the persist lines of play is a bad idea? Good idea. I think that the persist lines are always going to be three card combos because it's going to be a persist a sack outlet, and a thing that says the creature enters with a counter, a plus one counter. 
So you can definitely build the deck to be a persist deck, and it would potentially be pretty good. But you need to build into it super heavy. Like, if you did that, you wouldn't have any kind of sub-strategy. We're going for Flicker and Reanimator, but if you wanted to do a specifically persist deck, it would work. I agree with Josh. I think we take out the Buried Alive. Um, it's just a good way to bend things we wouldn't otherwise want to see, but we're ultimately trying to reanimate. Um, but putting all our eggs in one basket, our graveyard, can be really damning. I think that careful study is probably safe to go. Um, I think we should just be looking for our draw. At 26 lands, I feel like maybe we're just a little shy of what I usually like doing, but I know all the cool kids are doing it now, so maybe I should just stick with it. Did we pull a foil Prime Mire Lurker Queen? Did I pull uh, a foil one? I don't know. I think we pulled a Mire Lurker Queen. I'm sorry. I, this is important. I'm pretty sure we did, but I'm not sure if it was foil. Oh, I want it to be foil so bad, Will. Because I want to switch it out in my uh, my uh, Shorakai list. If So, sorry. Maybe you pulled it, actually. I have no idea. Yeah, you I probably... thought you did, but... I feel like I did, too. I got that weird bear reprint multiple times. That's cool. Watchful Radstag? No, I didn't pull shit. Damn, I, I remember seeing this art. I feel like we pulled this Hallbreaker Horror. This, this art looks so damn good. All right, uh, Will, one more card to cut. What is it going to be? Um, let's see. Be what true to yourself. Be true to yourself, Will. Do we do the saw in half business? I mean, that's cutting two cards, technically. <laughs> um, Cut two cards out of utility land? Oh, I was trying to look up uh, zero cost creatures. Hmm. Oh, sorry. How are you looking at the list? You're, you're, uh, yeah, I'm just going through to see if there's anything that pops out as a, why are we, why are we running this? Or if this doesn't seem too worth it. Nothing is immediately popping out, which is pretty good. Yeah, uh, sorry, I just show it showing off my walking ballista. I was so excited for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trickster, you're absolutely right. I did I get one dope ass surge foil. I didn't even realize it was surge foiled. Walking ballista. Reprint. Like, it's so good. Yeah, I'd say that we either cut the spell snare or the uh, careful study. I'm sorry, what? Uh, I'd say we either cut spell snare or careful study. Oh, I already took careful study out, so we need to cut one more card. We oh, can cut okay. spell snare. Um, we don't have Orgish Bowmaster, we don't have the Dothy Voidwalker, we don't have oh. Opposition Agent, we don't have... I think we cut the... Uh the saw in half stuff and we can add in the three good black cards well yeah it's interesting uh josh was like yeah the uh that's the sort of holy trinity right now of black creatures that people care about they don't really fit the theme no um i still think that bow masters is probably viable though ledger shredder probably not mm. hold up let's let's orcish bow masters is maybe just too good a utility not to include uh if i'm being honest also, flickering it is pretty good. If we can Ooh. do infinite flickers with it, we kill people. That's just an outlet. Yeah, just need to pull into it. Um, that's that's very true. Um, workers, but opposition agent. Well, you like stealing tutors. Yay. How do you feel about Dothy Voidwalker? I'm I'm kind of lukewarm on Dothy these days. I don't think we need Dothy. All right. Um, but magical third thing. Uh, if we're gonna cut saw in half sacrifice and. We can cut PETA, too. I don't think we really ever need PETA. If we cut those three things, what is the th magical third card you want? Is there a piece of ramp we're well, missing? Uh, there... If we cut those three things, then we have exactly 100, right? No, no. Uh, we're missing one card if we cut those three things. So I've okay. added Orcish Bowmaster, Opposition Agent. What's the magical third one? Uh, 
Is there really no other free and or land untapping thing? I guess not. We could do Blood Pet. A little piggy bank. Did we cut Cloud of Fairies? No. We, 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 we sideboarded Cloud of Fairies. No, no, no. No, for sure no. I left it in. Oh, shit. All right, we'll put Cloud of Fairies back in. Yeah, there we go. Baru Miha! <laughs> yeah, we got Narmea in there. I, I, I left her in. Um, Wait, maybe All there's right. two copies. I swear to God, I, I didn't cut Cloud of Fairies. I don't remember doing that. Okay, well, let's cut now. So we're going to cut the saw in half. We're going to cut the sacrifice, and we're going to cut Pure into the Abyss because I do not think we need them as well. All right, guys, let's see how competitive Tapped Out thinks our deck is. 95% will. Oh, shit. Ooh, it's right under. Ooh, it's, right, it's right there for you. Okay, guys. It's that time. Oh, boy. I'm going to pour myself some more rye. Um, you know, I honestly do still have very high hopes for this list, but I'm not going to lie to you. It was kind of a struggle putting this one together because, like, in theory, it sounds very simple and clean. Uh, in practice, trying to set this list up, nothing felt clear or simple. It, it suffers from, like, branching, like, branching path syndrome. You have so many different options that you can't pick one. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little nervous for how it's going to perform, but it should be easy to get our commander down. That much is true. And hopefully a fat load of draw. Uh, undying combos with Yawgmoth. Yeah. So, yep, Persist, Undying, uh, Reanimator Loops. We didn't even add Crater's Grasp. You know, um, that's one of those things that we certainly could have played and probably should, frankly. Um, but this list is just a blueprint for you guys to follow, and it is certainly not the ultimate end-all be-all saw true. Uh, if there are any cards that come to mind for you guys that you think are worth adding or, or are worthy additions for the play lines we're incorporating, uh, so that being Hallbreaker lines of play, Hoarding Brood, lines, uh, Hoarding Brood Lord lines of play, let us know. Um, but on that note, let's play test this deck. Alrighty. So we're not going to do this, Will. Uh, one Island Spellseeker, Frexian Walker, Ornithopter, Priest of Gix, Deepwood Legate. Subtlety? That is a lot of low CMC stuff. If Free we, shit. Yeah. If Basically, only we could play priest. a commander turn one or turn two. That would have been amazing. That would have been so damn amazing. I think the Mana Crypt and the Soul Ring really are calling for at least one to two, two mana rocks, but this is okay. Uh, we have Manamu, which is fine. Uh, Underground Sea, which is also fine. Uh, Calling the Weak, no creatures. Delay, which is a fine counterspell, which is probably what we're going to hold uh, this open for, right? Or we can Imperial Seal. So I think that this hand is keepable for a turn to Sautru, but... What do we Imperial Seal for if that's what we shoot for? We could hold the delay to stop someone from comboing off here, but we also just have the Force of Will. So I think we go for the Imperial Seal. So, uh, thoughts, Will? What, what would you Imp Seal in this instance? Sorry for the ads, guys. Uh, Tapped Out's doing this thing now where it's demanding I show ads. Yeah, um, it's, it's being weird and being dumb. For the Imperial Seal, I'd either go for some kind of draw effect or I'd go for probably Spellseeker one or the other Spellseeker hits what for you? Uh, Spellseeker gets some flicker effects to try to let you draw off Sauteru a little bit more uh, alternatively it can find another tutor <laughs> hmm. I hit everything there is no clear Imperial target it's, all... I'd go for draw effect. That's probably what I would go for, because I think a turn two Rhystic Study is probably better than Sautru. We do not have the one ring, although, you know, the, the in my mind, I, and I didn't even bring it up, because in my mind, I'm like, well, we should be getting Sautru pretty cleanly. How much do we need the one ring? And frankly, any deck where I can put the one ring down before my commander, I'll gladly do. 
usually, right? So it's tricky. Um, yeah, Imperial for Ristic or Ring. Yeah, I hate to say it, but it, it it is the cleanest line of play. I mean, we are already illustrating the fact that we have Ristic, which also means just ignoring our commander next turn. But I do think we seal it. We've got the countermeasures to make sure we land the Ristic. Uh, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Ristic on top. All right, next turn. Next turn, we get the Ristic. Maybe we take some damage. Maybe we don't. I'm not really tracking it. We're just trying to see how far we can go with this one playthrough. Um, we're going to go Manamo into Mana Crypt for the Ristic study. Let's just say that it clears and we're A-OK. -okay. Um, on turn two, if people haven't gone off already, then I can suspect that we'll get like one to two draw unless they're being very, very modest. So let's just say two draw to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt here. Um, we're going to draw into an Ornithopter. We're shy a land drop for turn, but we should get there. Um, well, so we could do... Mm, I know it's weird, but we could technically do Ornithopter Calling the Weak just to give ourselves more mana to play more shit. But we are gonna, we're going to miss a draw doing that. But we also have Reanimate too, so we could like reanimate one of these two creatures. What is the cleanest way to... To play through this hand here. We want to put Satru down. I know that, but... Yeah. If we uh, just play him and play Ornithopter, we'll get one draw, and hopefully it's a land, and then we can maybe do more. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd go for that. Right. So, we'll do that. Um, I'll put the Ornithopter into play. We didn't cast any... Uh, didn't use any mana to do that. God, look at these ads. There's a... Creepy face mask with a USB US USB C charger, and then there's just scantily clad women. Revolve wedding shop. How do they? I'm a newlywed. How do they know? Okay, force of negation. Not what we needed. That's okay. Um, but force of negation is going to be really great uh, for our opponents' turns. Right. So uh, we only again bearing in mind we only have one of one of two free options here. So we'll just bide our time. But I think force of negation off turn is just the better option. Okay. Um, pass. Well, let's just say we get one draw off of one of our opponents. Cool. Uh, let's say we have to use the force of negation. I will exile a blue card from my hand, and probably it's, delay. It's gonna be the delay. Yeah. Okay. We get another draw off that. Cool. Let's just say we used a Deadly Rollick off turn. Probably going to do some crowd control. We get one more draw. Okay. And then draw for turn. Okay. We're going to play the Underground Sea. I think we just start by killing... We could straight up play Grief off of the uh, Culling the Week if we wanted to. Uh, but that doesn't give us the free draw. So none of these things really give us the free draw outside of the Reanimate and the Animate Dead. And we don't have a tutor for anything right now. So we're really just like, you know, we could flash out Orcus Bowmaster off of a Culling the Week, um, or we could just manipulate Culling the Week right now. Um, frankly, you know, Culling the Week really just looks like something we could use to play Grief, evoke it, and then reanimate it, right? So we could like maybe target two people. Anyone who tried to go off and didn't successfully win just there, I think we could just like Grief, evoke, Culling the Week, and then we've got two ways to, you know, reanimate it to do that same thing, although we're probably not going to use both of these ways. Does that make sense, Will? Yeah. yeah so, so I'm going to do that. Like, it, it being... Um, it going to the graveyard immediately afterwards isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, so, yeah. So I'll exile this to grief someone. Uh, the person that... Whoever has the most cards in hand, really. Um, so it'll let us draw. Cool. Uh, it'll go to our graveyard. I think that we could probably just animate it, uh, animate dead it, I should say. Uh, we'll use the underground C here. We'll animate dead it. Grief comes into play. I'll hit the, the next biggest target. I'll draw a card. And it's important to note that this is turn four, so it's a little slow rolling right now, but that's okay. Um, did I play underground C here? I did, right? Yeah. Okay. So the Peevist is uh, neutral. I kind of just want to hold for the Orc uh, Orcish Bowmaster, excuse me. I think that's yeah. all I really I like need that. to do. I mean, and we've got Mental Misstep, obviously. We've got Force of Will for one better, and we've got the Bowmaster. So it's not like we're not doing anything. It's just a, a little bit slower of a game here. 
Um, I do think we go for the Bowmasters, bloop, bloop, bloop. So we make a token or copy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's just say we get one draw off our opponents this turn. And it's a Dance of the Dead. Um, nothing else really remarkable happens, and we don't need to use our counter spells because we fib about not having answers. Okay. All right, Will. How do we close this out next turn? Misty Rainforest. That's going to do it. So with what we're representing right now, if I had a Demonic Tutor in hand, what would I tutor for? Uh, you could tutor Infern Tomb, then you could reanimate for uh, Holbreak Horror or something like that, and then just try to win off of anybody doing pretty much anything. You you have options to win off of one card in a myriad of different ways. Yeah. Even like Hoarding Broodlord. You could play Hoarding Broodlord, do the Displacer Kitten thing, and then try to win that way. This is very much options. like crowd control right now. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's start up a game where we're a little bit more of the aggressor. Um, I want to just see a turn one saw true and see what that can even look like. Not this. Um, I do like Frexian Tower here, though. That's actually not so bad. Not this. We're just going to cut till we find a damn hand. There we go. <sighs> so we've got two lands. We probably start with the Polluted Delta, a Jeweled Lotus, a DT, uh, technically a free draw with the Grief, although it's not necessarily my favorite option. Let's just see what this looks like. So we'll draw for turn. Uh, March of Swirling Mist. Okay. Grab the Underground Sea. Loop. Jeweled Lotus. Break it. Put Saw True down. And that's it. Uh, shuffle, 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 shuffle. Uh, next turn. We are with Cyclonic Rifts and a Manamo. We'll play the Manamo. Um, Demonic Tutor. So we've got a Resculpt, a March of Swirling Mist, a Cyclonic Rift, and a Cutdown. So four pieces of temp and clean removal. A Grief and a DT. So the Cutdown is probably the target for Grief if we wanted to get a free draw. Uh, Chef, the One Ring is not in the deck. Right. I mean, the goal was really to draw off Sautru, but I find that I'm having a tough time doing it consistently here, at least with the hands yeah. we've been seeing. So there is no like clear... The persist options are probably the better options for Sautru in the end, in using Sautru as just a yeah. combo piece. I hate to say it, because I, I would rather forego shitty cards but in either situation you're kind of having to use shitty cards like zero cost creatures are great for your as additional cost sacrifice and or decent off of the comeback with like a cloudstone curio right like it's the permanent you bounce so you can play it again but the persisters are just a plus b plus small c that will win you the game on the spot we have too many spells, we're trying to play too many control cards, I think. Potentially. The thing is, though, there just isn't enough of an influx of tutors or redundancy to where we're pulling into those more so. I agree, though. I, I think that if you look at the deck, I think it was 30 instants. Maybe it's still that. Um, that's nearly a third of the list, right? So a, 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 most, a majority of it, and those aren't all just like, you know, interaction. Like a handful of tutors are in there. But one tutor is in there. Step through. A step through instant. I don't know. Um we get do you want to roll the dice on one more game here or do you want to just see this one through really quick? I think we probably got a good feel on how the deck is Victoria. supposed to play. I think the version that we went for probably isn't the way to do it, but Well, what would you cut? Well, I'd, I'd rework the deck completely is what I'd probably do. Because mm. I think going for the persist lines is a little bit better. And if you go for um, a... What is the... If you go for like a more glass cannon build, that might be safer. Like run all the persist things that you can, more or less. All the good ones. Mm. And then all the things that make things enter with counters and then a couple sack outlets. That's probably the way to do it. Because the issue with our build seems to be that we have several different combos that each have a tiny bit of overlap 
but not enough where they can kind of cover for each other. So we're trying to find specific combos for specific situations, and we're not always able to find them. So it's basically just an unfortunate situation of, oh, well, we could combo here, but we don't have... X, Y, Z. Sorry, need to sneeze. Okay. Um, we could combo here, but we don't have any of the tutors to find the combo things, and we had to use our tutors earlier to set things up so that we could combo in the future. It's basically we tried. We need to grind value to find the combo pieces to combo off, but it's better to just have a deck where you have a, a bunch of different combo pieces so that it'll cover for itself. So I think doing persist and over redundancy is probably better than doing like multiple combos to try to cover things. I think just having a crap ton of the same combos the solution for Satoru. I agree. Okay, so it's bust. <laughs> yeah. Sa this, Satoru this one bust. is a bust. But um, there's a way to build Satoru. We just did not choose the right way. Okay. So on that note, not to end on anything sour, uh, feel free to leave this video with a like if you found it at least entertaining. I know that the list, I mean, at least in my mind, didn't perform exactly the way I wanted it to. It was definitely slower rolling, which isn't a bad thing. There's always space at the table for a control list. So that's not bad that that's what we were doing. And obviously everything we were doing was fictitious. Um, imagining needing to use removal, imagining we need to use counters like it's foreseeable, but um, it doesn't make for a good sampling of how quickly a list can win, or at least how efficiently it can get there. Uh, what I can say, though, is that Sautru, at least in this build, was certainly slower. Um, and we drew through a lot of hands. Like, any of our other decks, even like Marvo, when we made Marvo, like, we were seeing hands that did the thing directly, like, very quickly. And... Um, it's kind of nutty that we didn't get there with a, with the kind of haste I expected from a 2CMC commander, right? Like, when I play Oswald, I'm like, I know I can do this by turn three consistently, and that's mono white, right? Um, so you don't... Yeah. You, we kind of, I ex kind of expected more consistency with this, but I guess when you really look at it with a bird's eye, it's... It, it, is, it is lacking the kind of redundancy necessary to do the thing well. And we... I think we kind of landed on that in the, the tier list build, like, we put this in S, and I felt like it, We maybe we said as much that it will only get progressively better as, as more sets come out and more utilities come out for him that are usable. But as it stands for this particular strategy, I wouldn't say that this is S range. I think if we did something with, like, persist and or, I don't know, well, like, a, there's got to be, like, some dumb reanimating skeleton uh, what is it called? Uh, they're, they're the thing that lets the uh, cost reduce abilities from the graveyard slash Brexian altar. There's gotta be some shit like that we could do. There's all of the redundant bring back from the grave like embalmers, embalmers tools or blood gas or any. Yeah, exactly. All, all, all of that stuff. Competitive Alan. Um, probably, but you're not going to be, um, I wouldn't put money on this player, <laughs> if, if that's what you mean. Um, the correct way is Eureka. Stop. <laughs> I have Eureka behind me still. Uh, put it. Uh, it's definitely as hard to build. I feel not uh, sure which which list is best. Yeah, Bloodgast. Uh, is Bloodgast competitive? Is Bloodgast competitive? Uh, Bloodgast has always been somewhat competitive. Like every, there has always been a bunch of decks that have used blood gas to some efficiency, usually hermit druid stuff. I'll oh, say shit. one of the best options for the deck may be just like Grave Crawler for Exian Altar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Infinite draw that way. Uh actually oh no you cast it from the graveyard. It's it not a reanimate, never mind. But something like that. Right. I think the reanimator loops are probably the best options, whether you do persist or just straight up reanimator loops, that's <laughs> probably the, the better way of doing it. Hear me out, Will. Reassembling skeleton. Return reassembling skeleton from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Okay, reassembling skeleton. Embalmer's tools. Activated abilities of creature cards in your graveyard cost one less to cast. Okay, hold on, hold on. And then Phyrexian altar. Hmm? 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 Uh, 
hold up. I think there is a combo that is that, but one less step. Shut uh, up. If, you, if, if it exists, let me know. I built a retraction helix version. Uh, that'd be kind of sick. Uh, it might be best as a Joyra style deck, but not sure. At You're... the uh, playing a bunch of zero cost creatures and then no. bouncing them over and over I, and over again. I, I like that. I, I do think that you're more limited in scope, though. Like, obviously, Joyra just the cost reduction, artifacts, blah. Right? And yeah. then you just draw infinitely. And once that engine gets going, you need to clear the board, clear fucking board, or, like, it, she just gets away with it. Because the clear the board answer, at least the time where Joyra was more prevalent, was, like, Psych Rift, and that didn't do shit. Like, they enjoyed, they actively enjoyed that. They are trying to find cards that bounce that sh their, their, their shit into their hand. Anyways, tried Sao True. Basically, it felt felt basically just worse Ninja Commander, even with the res lines. Uh, but I probably built it wrong. See, Josh, I, yeah, it's weird. I don't, I think that there's probably a clear strategy that we just haven't dove into yet. Would you want to open one more pack wheel, though, before we close this one out? We can do uh, one more for each of us. I'm almost sour about this list. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not upset. I just think I, that uh... I still firmly believe that Satoru is really strong and has a lot of potential. I just think that we went about it the wrong way. Okay, so it's us. It's not Satoru. It's us. Yeah, Bowmaster is the big problem. Not you. Uh, it's me. Yeah. Uh, all these Merc tokens. Okay, we're gonna open up one more pack of uh, Collector Booster Thunder Junction. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this before we close this one out, and then I'm going to eat dinner let me know what you guys are eating if you ate dinner <laughs> i want to know what everyone's eating these days because for me it's uh trader joe's pizza tiny bones the pick is pocket, this, your pack or mine? this is you will nice i tiny bones is delightful uh i want a copy of him he's really fun he needed partner satru or tiny bones both let's you, go you got dust bowl baby Oh, noise. That's actually really sick art for Dust Bowl. Yeah, I like that. Dream Thief's Bandana? Dream oh, Thief's Bandana? That's Ragavan. That's the Ragavan effect on an equipment. Minus the treasure part. It's just impulse in opponent's deck. You got Slick Shot Show Off. Nice. Final oh. Showdown. Holy shit. Lord. This is actively yeah, good. I'll, I'll trade you that one because I know that you want that one. I, I do ac actually need this card, yeah. Um... We'll talk about it later. Uh, Trader yeah. Joe's is so good. I had Chipotle. I had Chipotle yesterday at the train station. <laughs> it was worth it. Uh, Essence Capture, baby. I don't remember what that does for the life of me. <laughs> it's okay, but you remember what Fling does. Yes, I do. <laughs> Forest. <laughs> you can see it's bad. <laughs> I think that they clearly started with that outline and just built around it. Yeah. It doesn't look bad though i think it's just that the forest stands out so immediately that you're missing the forest from the trees will okay is what i'm saying yeah. you're there's there's more to this art than you're giving it credit for nice like that's it. really it's a really good card yeah final showdown is freaking amazing uh getaway glamour um i do need to slot the showdown into um, oswald i just haven't determined where it goes uh i made bacon and brie Wait, I made bacon and brie stuffed with chicken breast and grilled asparagus? That sounds freaking amazing. Well, balsamic cream sauce. Wait, oh, chef, if you're still there, you probably made so many dishes tonight. <laughs> what are you, what are you making? Um, Ruthless Lawbringer. Your first pack was, well, that's not true. I think your, your my, manager. My pack was the one with the mana drain in it. But the first pack had the stuff you wanted, practically. Yeah, it had pretty much everything I wanted. Here, discerning peddler, bristleback sentry. All right, all right. Papa needs a new Stella Lee. <laughs> I I just assume that you can pull them in here. I I aren't there like special guests or other things in these packs as well? I don't. Um, might be. I'll quickly see if there is a. I don't know. Printing of Stella Lee to see if there's. I doubt. I think it's it probably doesn't just... look like it, but you might be able to find a copy in the packs. I don't know. <laughs> She's at like a dollar right now. I feel like it's never really the legendaries that are valuable from those boxes, but just because it's it's there, it's always there. You just buy the box. Um, but even still, okay, got one Merc. 
We've got detonation sphere. A detention sphere. Detention sphere, okay. That's uh, an Abdel card. It's here as well. <laughs> I will never need this Azorius card. Path to Exile. Uh, damn, if nice. only this were my That's foil. Nice art too. Yeah, I really like it. I wish that was in the foil slot. Damn, unless there's, uh, unless they Ragavan. Uh, the Mana Drain back also had a Terror of the Peaks. Yeah, yeah, no, Will's Mana Drain had the Terror of the Peaks. Is Terror of the Peaks worthwhile? I forget. Uh, Stun yeah, Terror of the Peaks is a dragon everybody goes to for, like, a bunch of non-dragon things as well. Hmm. Bon hey, Paul Bunyan! Yay. Hey, so Oh, true. speak of the devil and he shall appear! Yeah. Not not the art though, not the art. The the thumbs up boy. I yeah. do prefer this art, honestly, so that's okay. Aww. Sorry. But I love the, the smug bastard writes thumbs up with the smile of just Well, you know, if we make a version that we all like, then maybe I'll play it. Oh, this mountain's kinda cool. It's more mm -hmm. or less giving me the forest vibes though. Yeah. Mountain is my second least favorite from those. Mobile homestead? Oh shit, Howl's Moving Castle. I believe cost less to cast from Grave don't work. Skeleton is... No, no, activated abilities cost less. So, um, Embalmer's Tool. Activated abilities of creature cards in your graveyard cost one less to cast. Reassembling Skeleton is a generic and a black. So, so it would just be a black, so that is a, an infinite. I know, don't do it though. You can do Piteous Plunder and... <laughs> Uh, Brexian altar, and that's probably the better option. Well, don't knock the embalmer's tools, Will. That's not that's not all that's on the card. Uh, tap an untapped zombie you control. Target player puts the top card of his or her library into their graveyard. Come on. Mill. Uh, yes, mill <laughs> mill strategy, baby. Uh, Outlaws fury, phantom interference, gold pan, Oswald card. Uh, I love the art for Lone Shark, by the way. It's straight up a shark rogue in a fancy suit. <laughs> like that D and D skit where everybody's like, "No, yeah. I'm just an actual bear, but I'm a bear rogue." Yeah. So I, I've deceived people into thinking I'm not a bear. The path is pretty sick. Detention sphere, I'm never gonna use. So yeah, I'll trade you. I well. use the detention sphere. It goes perfectly with the Abdel art I have, which is also pseudo oh, one. Here, threat. I'll try. I don't know. I don't know the value of the cards. I'll trade we'll, you for we'll the final showdown. Yeah, we'll as we need no, it. No, it needs to happen on. I need. I need witnesses. <laughs> I need witnesses. Well, um, guys, if you enjoyed the stream, it helps a whole lot if you leave it a like. But even if you don't, thanks for joining us on this one. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy some dinner. I wish I had some not baked baked brie would be really amazing right now, but it's it's fine. We've got more collector boosters open later. I think we'll probably work on another legendary from the set. We've touched on Gitrog. Will already went off and did Stella Lee, but I feel like she's going to be done to death. So we'll figure out something for a brewing session in the future. But until the next time, guys, see you later. Uh, on a side note, I'm going to be working like, I think my general work hours are going to be eight to six from here on out and four days a week. Not to include additional freelance work I'm doing like over the weekend here. Um, so we, you can expect the streams to maybe run a little bit later into the evening. Hopefully not this late. I would really prefer we start at 630, but it's uh, tricky to just get back home within time for that. Um, but yeah, that's the only other thing I have to say. Will, any closing thoughts? Uh, if you want to build this Sateru for some ungodly reason, oh. uh, you can use our, our affiliate link in hey, the hey, hey. player to buy our cards. <laughs> Don't knock it. Don't knock it till yeah. you try no, no. it. Specifically Don't... our version. Yeah. Uh, I think that the Sateru does still have a ton of potential. I think that the persist or weird graveyard shenanigans is actually going to be a really good way of building this, but mm. the way that we built it is not too great. But, uh, yeah, yeah if you want to pick up any of the things that we brought up in this video... Feel free to use our TCG player affiliate link. Uh, if you want to buy one of the commander decks, buy Stella Lee. Buy yeah, Stella Lee. No, Holy crap, there's uh, so many good cards on the 99 of that deck, and Stella Lee's just the new tier zero commander. I realized breaking things. I, I called the Satru list quick draw. It was a fucking lie. This is the quick draw commander. <laughs> yeah, <that's> the quick draw. <laughs> this is the quick draw commander. My mistake. 
Dude, I didn't even realize that. This is different art, by the way. It, am I wrong? Wait. Different art from what Stella usually looks like? No, no, no. Yeah, this is totally different art. The art on the box is different yeah. from her actual card art. I, I, no offense to the artist. If it's the same artist, then that's fine. I like this art better. This art looks so good. That's the Stella Lee art in the card. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's the one to buy, though. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. Not for the other legendary. <laughs> you, you don't want to. You don't want to play yeah, that. The first time in forever. The face mm -hmm. commander is the one to beat. Um, okay, so so far as questions are concerned, sorcery soon, maybe. Um, if there are people that want to participate in playing some sorcery, I'll play sorcery online. Um, there isn't much for me to build off of. I think there are a handful of people tackling it. I still love playing the game. Um, I do. I, I would say that right now, the thing I prioritize in paper, just because I have a large playgroup that plays it now, is One Piece. Um, Star Wars is fun. Again, it's one of those things I haven't had the time to go out and play, but there is a place that runs events near me, like where I work. So that's more of a thing. Really, my free time is like going out to trivia or hanging out with people, usually. Um, but if I'm playing a card game, it's normally a one piece these days. Um, I want to play more Friday Night Magic, but our Fridays are usually brewing with you guys. Professor rated them quick draw QT number one by landslide, and two of them weren't even worth buying. Damn. Did the professor, I mean, just from a, a value standpoint, like, it's, I, I, does I he think it was the, um, the outlaws one was really bad, and then the, uh, what was the other one? Probably the Ni the Nile Lands one he probably liked. And what is the fourth one? I can't even remember it, so it's probably bad. Mm. Oh, the steel huh, the Sultai one. He probably didn't like the lands and he probably liked the Sultai. If I yeah. had to guess. Having seen all the cards, I gotta say, it's re really just if you're playing competitively, then probably just Stella Lee. Joshua? Have a good night, sir. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for hanging out. Good night, y'all. There was, like, news on Hyperlight Breaker, by the way. Yeah, I saw that. We got a, a spoiler for uh, the one of the mini-bosses and uh, a soft release date, I think, midsummer. Mm. If you guys want to know what I'm most interested in doing stream-wise, it is definitely the game and chats. I just want an opportunity to game in chat it doesn't need to be about anything in particular i think i've sort of come off that that, that idea um but just finding a game that is worth playing and that we have time for uh i've been playing the shit out of Baldur's gate 3 i'm enjoying it so much man i have two campaigns going at the same time i don't know just 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 picking <laughs> the altruistic options and then like uh, devious options pretty much like, between the two um yeah, but I would love to play a Hyperlight Breaker. Yeah, that game sure. looks like it's going to be great when it comes out. I know. I'm so uh, excited also, for it. If we do need to brew uh, another deck like next week or something, we can probably do Roxanne. Roxanne's probably the uh, the most interesting commander that we haven't brewed. I, did you get Roxanne in your pack too? I got a boiled Roxanne, I think, in uh, the second <laughs> Yeah, pack. you got Terra Peaks and the Roxanne and Lord. the Mana Drain all in the one pack. Yeah, this Roxanne is so cool looking. Yo, it's yeah. weird though. Is it my glasses? Maybe it's my glasses. It looked a little blurry. There's so much text on the card. I know. It, the worst part is it's literally just ETB make a meteorite. And right. <laughs> a lot of it, it. Sorry, ETB and attack make a meteorite. But because the meteorite has so much damn reminder text, like... Yeah. Oh, this one doesn't have it. Oh, shit. Not all of the mercenaries have a meteorite on the back. That's what I'll trade you for Final Showdown. <laughs> Get your meteorite, sir. <laughs> Wait, let me, let me see if I got... No, I just have the 